Sheldon Whitehouse born October 20, 1955, is an American lawyer and politician serving as the junior United States Senator from Rhode Island since 2007. He is a member of the Democratic Party and previously served as a United States Attorney from 1993 to 1998 and as the Attorney General of Rhode Island from 1999 to 2003. Early life and education Whitehouse was born in New York City, New York, the son of Mary Celine Rand and career diplomat Charles Sheldon Whitehouse, and grandson of diplomat Sheldon Whitehouse (1883–1965). Among his great-great-grandfathers were Episcopalian Bishop Henry John Whitehouse and railroad magnate Charles Crocker, who was among the founders of the Central Pacific Railroad. Whitehouse graduated from St. Paul's School in Concord, New Hampshire, and from Yale University in 1978. He received his Juris Doctor JD from the University of Virginia School of Law in 1982. <laughs> Pre-political career Whitehouse worked as a clerk for Judge Richard F. Neely of the Supreme Court of Appeals of West Virginia from 1982 to 1983. He also worked in the Rhode Island Attorney General's Office as a Special Assistant Attorney General from 1985 to 1990, Chief of the Regulatory Unit which oversaw utilities from 1988 to 1990, and also an Assistant Attorney General from 1989 to 1990. Whitehouse worked as Rhode Island Governor Bruce Sundland's Executive Council beginning in 1991, and was later tapped to serve as Director of Policy. He oversaw the state's response to the Rhode Island Share and Deposit Indemnity Corporation banking crisis, which took place right after Sundland took office. Whitehouse was appointed by Sundland to be the state's director of business regulation in 1992, where he oversaw a drastic reform in the state's workers' compensation insurance system. <laughs> Early political career U.S. Attorney President Bill Clinton appointed White House United States Attorney for Rhode Island in 1994. White House held the position for four years. With the 1996 extortion conviction of mobster Gerard we met, he was the first prosecutor to convict a member of organized crime under Clinton's three strikes law. White House also initiated the investigation into municipal corruption in Rhode Island that led to Operation Plunder Dome, in which Mayor of Providence Vincent Buddy Chanchi was eventually convicted on conspiracy charges. As U.S. Attorney for Rhode Island, White House oversaw an increase in environmental protection efforts, including an investigation into a Narragansett Bay oil spill that yielded the largest fine in state history. Topic. State Attorney General In 1998, White House was elected Rhode Island Attorney General. He initiated a lawsuit against the lead paint industry that ended in a mistrial. The state later won a second lawsuit against former lead paint manufacturers Sherwin Williams Co., Millennium Holdings, and NL Industries that found them responsible for creating a public nuisance. This decision, however, was unanimously overturned by the Rhode Island Supreme Court on July 1, 2008. The court found that under Rhode Island law it is the responsibility of property owners to abate and mitigate lead hazards. White House also founded the Rhode Island Quality Institute, an organization dedicated to improving health care quality in the state of Rhode Island. He also authorized the first Rhode Island State Police wiretap to investigate public corruption, when Black Providence Police Officer Cornell Young Jr. was shot and killed by two fellow officers while he was off duty in January 2000. White House was criticized for not appointing an independent prosecutor to investigate the shooting. Later that year, White House was criticized when 15 year old Jennifer Rivera, a witness in a murder case, was shot by a relative of the man she was to testify against later that year. After Rivera's shooting, White House strengthened the state's witness protection program. Topic: 2002 gubernatorial election. 
White House was defeated in the Democratic primary by former state senator Merth York, who was unsuccessful in the general election against Republican Donald Carcieri. Equals equals U.S. Senate equals equals. Topic: Elections. 2006. In 2006, White House ran for the seat occupied by Senator Lincoln Chaffee, a Republican seeking a second full term. After winning the Democratic primary by a large margin, White House went on to defeat Chaffee with 53% of the vote. 2012 On November 6, 2012, White House won re-election to a second term in office, easily defeating GOP challenger Barry Hinckley, both in state results and in local towns. White House won by 30 points, with 64.9% of the vote in Rhode Island. 2018 On November 6, 2018, White House was re-elected to a third term, beating Republican challenger Robert Flanders by 23%. == <laughs> <laughs> Tenure White House voted for the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act and the Budget Control Act. He voted against cut, cap and balance and the debt ceiling increase. Earlier in his first term, he voted for the stimulus package and the TARP. He voted against cap and trade, but sponsored offshoring prevention and supported the Global Warming Reduction Act. In traditionally liberal Rhode Island, both the Democratic White House and his predecessor, Republican Lincoln Chaffee, hold liberal political positions. But White House has been to the left of Chaffee on economic issues, a position that separated him from his opponent in the last election. In 2007, White House was ranked the second most liberal senator by the National Journal. White House supports stem cell research, abortion rights, LGBT rights, and gay marriage, as well as affirmative action. He has publicly supported a reintroduction of the Equal Rights Amendment. Like Chaffee, White House opposed intervention in Iraq Chaffee was the only Republican senator to vote against it. He voted to confirm Elena Kagan and Sonia Sotomayor to the Supreme Court, but opposed the nomination of Samuel Alito. White House supports a more progressive tax system and strongly opposed the Bush tax cuts and proposals to repeal the estate tax and the alternative minimum tax. He is in favor of gun control and has spoken out against the Patriot Act. White House supported introducing a timetable for withdrawal from Iraq, stating that the United States must use caution in the future and avoid engaging in military action in Iran. Despite a generally pro rehabilitation stance on crime, White House supports the federal use of the death penalty, but opposes its use at the state level in Rhode Island. White House also opposed the North American Free Trade Agreement and other similar proposals. He has styled himself as a supporter of fair trade and is opposed to using presidential authority to fast track normalized trade relations. In addition, White House has stated that he does not want torture abuse by the Bush administration to be papered over and supports a commission to uncover its war crimes. White House has faced some criticism for alleged insider trading, avoiding big losses by trading stocks after top federal officials warned congressional leaders of the coming economic cataclysm. In September 2008, PolitiFact determined that White House falsely claimed Paul Ryan's 2012 budget blueprint, gets rid of Medicare in 10 years. White House claimed to have meant that Ryan's plan would have ended Medicare, as we know it, turning it into a voucher program. In a 2018 interview with the Providence Journal, White House expressed opposition to D.C. statehood. He was dismissive of efforts to give district residents representation in Congress, suggesting they should be satisfied with the amount of federal activity nearby. White House supported a vote that would limit continuing U.S. support for the war in Yemen. Initially, White House was one of the two Democratic holdouts in the Senate, but an activist effort, including mobilizing fans of the Rhode Island band Downtown Boys, contributed to changing his position. Topic. Health care During the passing of the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, White House cautioned that conservative opposition to the bill was moving toward historical incidences of mob violence, saying, "...too many colleagues are embarked on a desperate, no-holds-barred mission of propaganda, obstruction and fear cautions us of the excesses to which these malignant, vindictive passions can ultimately lead." 
Tumbrils have rolled through taunting crowds. Broken glass has sparkled in darkened streets. Strange fruit has hung from southern trees. In December 2009, White House said, Birthers, fanatics, and people running around in right wing militia and Aryan support groups oppose Obamacare. In September 2017, White House announced he would co sponsor the Medicare for All Act alongside 16 of his Senate colleagues. Environmental issues In November 2011, Think Progress reported White House's introduction of a bill that would require federal natural resource agencies to be concerned with the long-term effects of climate change, and to encourage the preparation of natural resource adaptation plans by the states. The Safeguarding America's Future and Environment Act SAFE Act also would create a science advisory board to ensure that the planning uses the best available science." In reference to the proposed action on mandatory emissions curbs, White House told The Hill that, "...I am not hearing anybody on our side, even the people who are more economically concerned about the climate legislation who come from coal states, that sort of thing, saying, what are we going to say about this, is this a problem?" White House dismissed the Climatic Research Unit conspiracy theory. Climate Gate should properly be known as Climate Gate Gate because it was the scandal that was phony. In May 2011, White House introduced legislation to support coastal jobs and protect oceans. The National Endowment for the Oceans, Coasts, and Great Lakes Act S.973 is pending. Environmental Defense Fund praised him for working to protect the Gulf Coast wetlands. White House has said that development of alternate energy sources, including solar power, will eliminate U.S. dependence on foreign oil. He has cited the installation of new solar panels on three new bank branches in Rhode Island, saying that the projects created jobs, they put people to work, they lowered the cost for these banks of their electrical energy, and they get us off foreign oil and away, step by step, from these foreign entanglements that we have to get into to defend our oil supply." In regard to these comments, PolitiFact investigated the economics of renewable energy and determined that solar and wind investments would not have a large effect on oil consumption, calling White House's comments, "...mostly false," due to "...this misimpression." and because of the other inaccuracies in White House's speech. On November 14, 2013, White House gave his 50th weekly Senate speech on climate change. The series of speeches highlights the science of climate change and offers paths for the United States to take strong action. In a May 29, 2015, Washington Post editorial, White House advocated prosecution of members of the fossil fuel industry under the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act RICO, in order to investigate their interest in anti-global warming advocacy. U.S. <laughs> <laughs> attorney controversy In the spring of 2007, White House joined other senators in pressuring for Attorney General Alberto Gonzalez's resignation. After Gonzalez's first appearance before the Senate Judiciary Committee related to the controversy, White House told NPR, "...Gonzalez had a hard sell to make to me, and he didn't make it." He continued to question Gonzalez's service in the NSA warrantless surveillance controversy. Topic. Committee assignments White House is a member of the following committees Committee on Budget Committee on Environment and Public Works Subcommittee on Oversight Subcommittee on Superfund, Toxics and Environmental Health Subcommittee on Water and Wildlife Ranking Member Committee on Finance Committee on the Judiciary Commission on Security and Cooperation in Europe International Narcotics Control Caucus On August 3, 2007, it was announced that White House would receive the Golden Gavel Award, having presided over Senate debates for more than 100 hours in his first six months in office. Caucus memberships Healthy Kids Caucus International Conservation Caucus co-chair International Narcotics Control Caucus Senate Oceans Caucus co-chair After School Caucuses 
Topic: Electoral history. United States Attorney General and U.S. Supreme Court speculation Upon Attorney General Eric Holder's announcement in September 2014 of his intention to step down, some speculated that White House could be nominated as Holder's replacement. In February 2016, after the death of U.S. Supreme Court Associate Justice Antonin Scalia, USA Today named White House as a possible nominee to fill the vacancy. White House's service as a U.S. attorney and as Attorney General of Rhode Island gives him both legislative experience and experience as a legal official, though not as a judge. White House was ultimately not nominated. <laughs> Personal life In 1986 White House married Sandra Thornton, a marine biologist and granddaughter of James Worth Thornton and Elena Mum Thornton Wilson. Her step-grandfather was prominent essayist and critic Edmund Wilson. They live in Rhode Island with their two children, Molly Whitehouse and Alexander Zander Whitehouse. Among White House's distant ancestors are William Bradford, colonial governor of Massachusetts, and theologian Archibald Alexander. After meeting with Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke and Treasury Secretary Henry Paulson in September 2008, White House came under scrutiny due to possible insider trading when he sold a number of positions, valued at least at $250,000, over the next six days. White House was trading anywhere from 5 to 20 percent of his net worth. In Senate candidate Barry Hinckley's book, he said that it was "...implausible that much of someone's net worth would be traded without someone's knowledge." A spokesperson for White House's office explained that the senator "...is not actively involved in the management." of the accounts implicated, and that he neither directed his financial advisor to undertake any transaction during that time, nor ever took advantage of any exclusive or secret information. 